Welcome everyone, I'm Nina Griffin, and today I am very honored to be talking with Mark Jones for a short interview about his upcoming talk for the ESAR Online Symposium on August 20th, 2021. So Mark, not that he needs much of an introduction, but he is an evolutionary transformational astrologer and author, and he is also a therapist, if I understand correctly. So his astrology is very much informed by a therapeutic model, as well as a transformational one. So Mark, the title of your talk is Astrology is Archetypal and Evolutionary. And I'm going to ask you the same question that I ask everyone else, which is, are you excited to share your ideas about what astrology is with the audience this year? I guess me and everyone watching this is very excited by astrology and is very interested by it. Is it fair to say we're all drawn to it to begin with, to self-discover, to find something kind of the extra layer of meaning about our lives, some kind of extra guidance. And having spent now, what, so I was 23 when I first encountered astrology through Warren Kenton's Kabbalistic Astrology School in Regent's Park College, London. And what am I now, 50? So 27 years of investigation and the last 20 plus years working with people across the world. Um, and in this new climate, we see a certain open-mindedness about astrology, don't we? partly because of a certain kind of open-mindedness about things generally, partly because of a desperation existentially about the condition of the world or polarizing politics or disastrous global pandemic. You know, people are reaching to astrology. What's the tangible it has to offer them? What's really going to change your life? This is a question I've always gone into astrology with. And I think it becomes important to contemplate astrology from that vantage point and cut through any potential superstition about it being this thing that's going to tell you how things go in your life you know in my view you don't end the relationship because saturn came to your venus you end the relationship because certain things went on in the relationship that were problematic and the love drained away and suddenly the love wasn't bigger than the problems and that happened to correspond with saturn to venus a moment in your life of reflection, of maturation, of I'm prepared to face the difficulty of leaving this significant other. So astrology is this fantastic multidimensional map guidance system. But I want to, in my talk, critique the idea that it is a literal thing in itself. So if you'll forgive me one technicality, in philosophy, there is the realm of ontology, the study of being. So I argue that humans have a primacy of being. Your heart and mind are real. I don't know you until this conversation, but I do know that your heart and mind are real, that your soul is real. That is an ontological order of reality. It has being. The chart does not have being. Astrology does not have being. It is a symbolic message. It is a symbolic code, if you like, that we work to decode to the best of our abilities. And it's a profound and beautiful gift, if understood in that way. Let's not falsely elevate it above and beyond the human. Let, the best astrology serves people to grow in soul. And to do that, you have to understand that soul is of the central importance, that soul lies beyond and transcendent of the chart. You can't hunt the chart for a particular asteroid called soul or a particular configuration that will point to the color of your soul. The chart is a symbolic portal that might help you contemplate your soul. But let's realize that soul or essence has the category of being and the chart is a symbol system to serve that category or to imprison it potentially, potentially you get lost in the maze of the astrology, forgetting the being. And that's a trap for astrologers too. You know, it, many people listening to this will know of times when astrologers seem to say something or they've heard of stories when astrology has a particular set system and your chart meets the configuration of that set system. And that means this in your life, your, your father was such and such, or this happened to you at this age. And the occasional person turns around and goes, well, my father wasn't like that, or this didn't happen at this age. And I'm saying, rather than assume that people coming to astrology are somehow stupid or have forgotten their childhoods or, you know, don't remember the diary of their life, that we actually look at astrology itself here and learn from people's experience that astrology become elastic, that it become protean and responsive to the user interface, if you like, in modern terms, you know, 
the people coming to astrology matter not just because of a client-centered counseling type approach they matter because they are the technical factor in forming the chart how can you truly realize a chart without the consciousness that lights it up without an understanding of the life story the thoughts and feelings the deeper aspirations of that person so this is the kind of territory i'm going to dig into and i'm going to look at the difference between a sign a signal and a symbol you know different ways we might interpret what a chart is because i'm effectively arguing that a chart is more like a shakespearean sonnet than it is a car manual you don't look to your chart you know there's this feeling isn't there how does the transmission work how do i get that annoying traffic report off the radio system that comes on every 10 minutes that i still haven't worked out how to do on my car and i've had my car for two years you know you we, we look at the chart like a manual going this health thing or this other thing but I argue, you know, I think fundamentally it's not like that. It's not a linear system where your Mercury Saturn aspect equals this or your Venus Uranus aspect equals this or what have you. It's actually a complex poem, if you like, or stained glass window reflecting the light of your true nature if it was perceived in that way. And then that's so exciting that you don't need it to be the other things. You don't need to give it the false premise, perhaps, or I would argue at least partially false premise of being this kind of encyclopedia thing that you look at for all these different things and you're going to get some kind of exact answer. Because I think many people who've studied astrology for a long time, frustratingly realize there are not exact answers to certain ponderous questions. You know, It doesn't just give up exactly what you were projecting onto it that you would have liked. And I'm going to try and condense this in half an hour for Isa. So, you know, fun, fun, fun. <laughs> Hopefully that wasn't the entirety of your talk. No, I'm sure exactly. it's not. There's so exactly. much more to say. It, well, exactly. And, you know, really I'm encapsulating what would be a 90 minute presentation into half an hour in one sense. And then we have, fortunately, this last period, the last three or four years I've been working with a researcher full time. And he spends a lot of time creating the PowerPoint slides to my specifications and discussions we have about the best way to reach people so this will be accompanied by a powerful visual presentation that will also um, you know expand upon the points but i look forward to it because i think it's an intelligent profession that asks itself what it's doing that, it, that it's not okay to just flow forward in, in an era where astrology is going growing in popularity and really impacting a lot of people we have to keep assessing what it really is. How much are we giving to people? You know, how much are we serving people's real needs? Yes, no, it makes sense that this is really, and I could see how this informs your entire kind of consultative therapeutic model. Isn't yes. It? Because that's yes. really part of that discussion. So without the client astrologer interchange, the, there is nothing, there is only sort of a dry theory, which may or may not actually fit the facts. Well, and to sneakily give away in response to that, one of, I think, a sweet part of the presentation. I mean, if you think about it, you know, I don't know, October 19th, 27th, 1964, 5.13 p.m. in Milwaukee, you know, in the hospital, someone's born. Outside the window, a blackbird is born or a song, song thrush. Same moment, same chart. Or a, a cockroach or a rodent is born in the basement of the hospital. Same time, same chart. It's not just a counseling orientation issue. It's also a technical philosophical issue. Charts are abstract moments in space time. They don't become what we think they are as a natal chart without the individual, without the unique human being. So it's actually a technical philosophical issue as well, as well as obviously suiting my therapeutic approach. I mean, I spent a long time on a psychology training, having to justify to my supervisors that astrology was a worthwhile thing. And I wasn't just telling people what to do. And then years later, I end up in the archive in Florence of Roberto Asagioli, the doctor that founded psychosynthesis, and I discover all his astrological work. So I mean, really, it's humorous because I, but in that period where I had to almost defend my thesis or defend my interests, I learned an awful lot. Those people that challenged me gave me an enormous gift because they really did show me the value of someone self-discovering their own potential versus the effectiveness but limited effectiveness of just telling them about that potential 
They're two completely different things. And when you watch someone truly self-discover it, it's so much more joyous and empowering. No, thank you. That is beautifully said, Mark. Is there anything else you'd like to tell the viewers that is more free form or less structured than what I've asked you? Come and see this talk. Come and join us on this ESO day. <laughs> I mean, you're going to get different perspectives, aren't you? Not everyone's going to have this perspective. And it's important for astrology that they don't, right? If every schmuck was like me, it would be too critical of the balance of astrology. There are pieces of people pushing the envelope in all these territories, trying to make this research element or more predictive or focused on a specific point aspect of astrology more real. And I salute them for it. But I think we can all examine ourselves then about the way that we hold that with the public the way that we then give back to people who are non-astrological students or specialists. Um, but I look forward to it. Uh, to be honest, I've had this mega busy schedule recently. I'm on one of those, you know, weird roles you get on sometimes as a person or as a professional. But when I saw the subject, I couldn't resist. When I was invited, I was just like, yeah, because it's just so important to contemplate this and it doesn't happen enough. So I'm super excited to join. And uh, yeah, I look forward to virtually meeting people in a few weeks. Well, thank you so much, Mark. I really appreciate your taking the time to chat with us. And yes, I hope that everyone can join us. Um, obviously for folks who are already signed up for the conference, this is included. For people who want to join, they can pay a little bit, but either way, I think it's going to be incredibly worthwhile. And I think Mark is definitely going to be one of the shining moments of this, uh, of this wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you very much.